It's the year 2020 and the age of electrification is finally upon us. Consumers now have a selection of battery powered vehicles offering range, performance, and most importantly, value. But the overall EV charging infrastructure is still lagging behind and range anxiety is still at the forefront of many buyers' minds. So now what? Joining me to talk about advancements in battery chemistry, EV car design, and how smarter battery management is helping to make up for the lack of infrastructure are Dr. Holger Manns, Head of Energy Management and High Voltage Systems at Volkswagen, and Lars Rager, Executive Vice President and Chief Technology Officer at NXP. Dr. Manns, let's start with you. I want to talk about what are consumers looking for when they're shopping for an EV, and how different is it when they're shopping for just any old car? The most important thing for customers is that uh, if they look on an electric vehicle, that you get a, um, a car with an acceptable price, so that it should be affordable for them. Uh, otherwise, they w won't buy a car. And in addition, I think the, the most uh, important thing is that the car is convenient for them looking for fueling also so charging and uh, things like, like this so when someone's in the market and they're maybe considering an ev versus a normal gasoline powered car what kind of things are giving them pause what are the sort of hurdles that they need to get over before they might make that decision yeah i think there are two things uh, um, they are combined together first thing is uh, they look at the range uh, if they want to go for for long distance the, today they say okay i, I have a a fueling pause for uh, five minutes or so, and then I can drive 500 more uh, miles or so on. And um, yeah, the, the charging time is, is an issue um, where they look uh, for, and um, as well the infrastructure of charging stations and so on. So, so Lars, what, talk to me about range anxiety. What sort of things can we build into cars to make consumers feel a little bit more comfortable that they can get where they need to go inside of them? Well, Tim, uh, of course, what you what you have is uh, you are limited in the amount of electrons that you can carry around with you, right? So your battery pack can can run there with a certain energy density, as we call it. So in other words, the amount of electrons that you can at every charging pump into the vehicle is limited. Now, what you want to make sure, of course, is that you can take each of those electrons to help you extending your, your driving experience. And for that, what you need to do is you can work basically on two parameters, making sure that you are optimally using each battery cell in that vehicle. So deplete it to the lowest possible level and charge it to the, max to the maximally possible level. And ideally, you manage every battery cell individually to making sure that every cell uh, uh, has, has the maximum range of electrons available. The other part is you can, of course, also starting working with batteries that have higher energy density. So the more electrons that can be pumped into the vehicle, uh, the better the driving range gets. Now, you talked about density, which is basically how much energy can you jam into a given size battery pack. But, but talk to me a little bit more about the construction. You know, I think most people think of batteries in an electric car as being basically one big battery pack. But that's not actually the case. There are individual cells and then modules within that. What does that, that structure look like? Right. So, so uh, maybe you, you think at your, uh, at, at your smart devices at home, uh, you normally have a couple of batteries uh, in such a device and you, you uh, stick them in and then you exchange uh, when, when they are depleted. Now, for a car, it's looking very similar just much bigger. Yeah? You can have hundreds uh, uh, of battery cells in these packs and, and each of these cells, this is what I was referring to, uh, ideally has to be managed separately because otherwise, if they all would be concatenated to each other, you only can deplete that entire stack to the level where the, the most empty cell is depleted. And even if the others are still halfway full, you cannot deplete further. And if the fullest cell is charged to the max, you also cannot overcharge because otherwise this overcharging would, uh, would start damaging uh, uh, the cells. So in other words, if you can individually manage each state of charging of each battery cell of the hundreds that are in there, uh, the better it gets from the electrons that you have available. Holger, from Volkswagen's perspective, you know, people think about crash safety and that kind of thing when they're buying a typical car. How does that change with an electric vehicle? How do you assure consumers that, that these vehicles are, are going to be safe for them? I would say in general, we have the same, uh, we should have the same properties as on a uh, con conventional uh, car with combustion engine is uh, driving. So uh, at the beginning of the design, we're thinking of what the car has to fulfill, uh, which properties it, it has to fulfill, which means uh, in a case of a crash also, it should behave like a conventional car. So there's no fire at all and something like this. 
So we consider this uh, even issues like overcharging and so on. This is all managed by our battery management system so that we are sure that uh, the, the, the passenger is uh, safe driving the car, even if he's uh, going to have a crash. Uh, we uh, secure that uh, there's no damage for him at all done by the battery system. And so there's a new platform called M MEB, whereas the eGolf was based on the previous platform called MQB. MEB is specifically designed for electric vehicles. So what kind of advantages does that give you in terms of packaging, in terms of interior volume, in terms of the overall design of the car that maybe wasn't possible in a previous platform? Yeah, the, the MEB, which stands for Module Electric, Electrification kit uh, is uh, a platform where you have first the battery system. It's a flat battery system looking a little bit like a chocolate. And um, uh, the car is designed around this battery system. This ensures that, uh, for example, for our new car, the ID3, you get the, the outer size compared to a Golf. And uh, the, the uh, room inside is compared to a Passat. So you get more, more space for the driver. Um, which makes it very comfortable. Lars, from NXP's perspective, you know, we've talked about how the architecture of the car itself has changed. How has the, the systems within the car advanced? We you know we've been talking about optimizing charging and things like that. What sort of learnings have you made from consumer behavior over the past, you know, five or 10 years of EV adoption? What sort of things have been learned to, to bring that more smarts into the car and make it easier for consumers? Yeah, uh, Tim, I mean, uh, the, the car architecture uh, is, is uh, changing massively. So, so over the last uh, 10, 15 years, uh, from a couple of control units at the wiring harness uh, into wiring harnesses today that are heavier than, than we are, uh, uh, hundreds of, of control units, uh, and of course, different propulsion systems. So from combustion engines uh, uh, with all the sophisticated uh, uh, technology, exhaust gas regulation and all of that type of stuff in to a electrical uh, uh, drivetrain, uh, which has basically much, much less mechanical components, much more uh, electronics uh, in there for the, for the management and steering. And now what you can do is also you can redistribute the functions of the car in a new way like in an IT system. Uh, so we, we have stolen a lot from the IT industry over the last 10 years in automotive, uh, where you said, basically you have different domains, functional domains. So the powertrain domain, the connectivity domain, the, the uh, uh, ADA, so ad, uh, advanced driver assistance domain, or the electronics domain, uh, infotainment domain. And in this powertrain domain, you can start optimizing uh, again. So the precision battery management electronics, powertrain, so how do you get the electrons out of the battery into the electric motor uh, domain or the driver assistance uh, activities around it. You have functional safety, specific functional safety electronics for that. So how do you make sure that your systems never, never, ever fail? And if they fail, how do they come into the fail safe state that they don't create damage or how can they repair themselves? So there is a huge amount of innovation in those areas. And uh, yeah, you hear it already. Yeah? There's so many electronics topics, uh, very sexy for the semiconductor makers of this world. <laughs> so it sounds like cars are kind of turning into rolling server rooms, if anything. But you know, within the IT industry, security is a major, major component. Is that something that we need to be more worried about in an electric car maybe than in a traditional car with all these systems being controlled by software? Um, do we need to worry about the safety of that side of things? Your car, to a certain extent, behaves like a connected fridge or like a connected thermostat you are trans transferring more and more of the responsibility to this smart connected device. And now of course you need to make sure that your connected fridge doesn't order 500 liters of milk for you for the weekend. Uh, you don't <laughs> want to have that. Uh, and you also definitely don't want to have your car misbehaving. So what we have done is we have, and literally we have stolen the chips from our passport segment. So like Lars has a passport, runs to the Lufthansa gate and says, hey, I'm Lars, I'm allowed to fly here. The fridge says, hey, I'm the fridge of Lars and I'm allowed to buy milk here. Or the car says, hey, and I'm using this passport in the car and I'm allowed to change my software, change my charging behavior, change my driving behavior. And of course, the powertrain is one of the big, big units. The battery system, as uh, Holger just mentioned, it is one of the very valuable units in an e-car where, of course, also protection via security is needed not to the last uh, uh, point that you also want to have uh, anti-counterfeiting. So you mm -hmm. want to have only original batteries built in. You want to know what the, how many charging cycles the battery has already behind itself. So in other words, you also want to protect your, your asset 
as a as a car driver. I'm eager to see how it pans out. I'm an EV owner myself, and I think uh, I think most people are going to love them once they get the chance to use them. Gentlemen, thank you both very much for your time talking about uh, this exciting space and exciting developments, and I look forward to seeing what's coming next. Thank you.